Hey guys, this is Kaizen here, and today I'm going to show you how to get off to the best start in the All The Mods 4 mod pack. Now if you like Minecraft, modded Minecraft, anything like that, then please be sure to subscribe and like for more. And of course, don't forget to hit that bell. <laughs> Okay, so before we get into anything about the game, the first thing to do really is a couple of housekeeping things. Now you see in the top left of my screen here, the one probe is showing me what I'm looking at. But you can actually change this and make it really however you want. So if I type in here slash the one probe and then config, we can open up this little GUI right here. And we can make the scale like bigger or smaller, depending on how you want it. Uh, you can also click where on the screen you want it. So if I want it in the middle, I can click there. But you can put it all around here, wherever you like. I quite like it in the top uh middle like that uh, so that's default you've got whaler full transparent black and white uh, i kind of like the black and white because you just find it very clear and easy to look at of course you guys can do whatever you want escape out of that and you are done uh, the other thing to say this is just a tip for when you're going through the game uh, let's say there's a, a piston for example this is a recipe that you're using often if i ho hover over this and hit a you'll see it goes over here into my bookmark recipes so then i won't have to search it next time it'll just be up here if I want to remove it, I can hit A again to get rid of it. So a couple of little housekeeping things there to get us started. But then you're going to want to obviously get into the game. So we can see here the seed we've got, which will be down in the description. It's just Kaizen, my name, all in lowercase. We've got a village right over there. Uh, but of course, you may not get that lucky. It's a very lucky seed. I've <laughs> got a lucky name, guys. Uh, but if you hit M, it'll open up a map like this. You can immediately see where you've spawned. And of course, if you're out exploring, you can do this. See where you are, you can zoom out and get a better view or zoom in uh, if you need a closer view. So if you're looking for something in particular, then you can see where you're at. Uh, now, in my case, I'm looking now, obviously, I've just started the game. I want to start up a bit of a beginner base. Now, I do want to be near this village because I'll definitely be using that. Um, but in particular, I'm looking to be near trees and water. And then, if possible, lava and oil. So like this here, right here, you can see there's oil. There's some oil up here. As far as lava goes, it doesn't look like we start with any. That might be a lava fall there, but it needs to be a pool, really. But that's not as important because we can actually go to the nether to get lava for power and things uh, later on. I'm obviously also going to be thinking about things like food and farming. I want to be near some sheep to get some beds and things. Uh, Looks like we've got some cows here. Uh, we've got the um, cork plugin or uh, mod, I should say, which is why some of the animals look a bit different. That is a normal cow. So I can get started by killing some cows to get some food. Find some sheep as well, and then get my bed set up. So have a think about where you want to go, and say M is the way to look at that. So I'm going to go now and get myself set up, and then come back with a few more tips. So guys, I've been getting on with a few things off camera. Uh, and what we've got here is a little base just in here where we're going to sleep and stuff. For now, of course, uh, we can make this a little bit prettier as we go. Uh, but if I hit the M key, you see the map here. It's a great location. I've got loads of wood nearby, which you know, you're just going to need tons of that, so that's useful. The village is very close. There's some oil here for later. Lots of water if we want to use water for power and that kind of thing. There's even a ravine here, which we can look at when we're mining, although I'm going to go into mining in a bit more detail in a second. Um, so everything's pretty good. I would say this is a good location, obviously, depending on what you want to do. Uh, but being near to a village and near to wood and that sort of thing is never a bad idea. There's also a lot of animals around in the plains area that I can start breeding for food and also for their resources you know leather and wool things like that uh, so at this point I highly recommend that you set home and the way you want to do this is by hitting the B key and you can type in here home and choose any color that you want it to be so let's give ourselves a nice gold home shall we confirm that uh, now if I walk away from this a little bit you'll see the home key is now there so wherever we are in the world we can always look at that to find our way back home if we need it Incidentally, if you ever want to delete it, if you open up your map, again, that's the M key, you can hover over it, you can right click it to edit it, uh, and you can also press the delete button, and that will get rid of it if you ever need to do that. Also, if you die in the game, you'll get a death point, and the way to delete the death point is to go and do that. Uh, I know personally, they, I find them a little bit annoying, uh, so you guys may find them annoying as well and want to delete them. That's how you go about doing that. Uh, but setting your home is obviously a good idea, and then, of course, you want to sleep in the bed there and set your home in there permanently so you spawn back here if you do die. So the next very important thing to do on any mod pack, but uh, especially in this one, is you're going to need to go mining and get yourself a load of resources together. Now you can mine in the overworld, but there is also a mining dimension. If I show you here, uh, if you go to the mining dim portal, it's not too difficult to make early game, apart from really the end of Pearl, which I'm going to come on to right now. So you want to find yourself an area that's got a bit of a plains area like this. This is good because you've got a high visibility display around you. And then you're going to make up a little bit of an area to trap the Enderman. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of all this stuff here like this. And we'll just place down a few blocks. So we're going to place three high like that. 
and make a five by five. So one, two, three, four, coming off of that one. One, two, three, four, coming off of that one. And what this will do is give us a little platform to trap ourselves underneath to get the enderman. Now, of course, some of you may know this. I realize that I'm trying to tailor these tips uh, for everyone. Uh, the other thing that you might want to do, depending on how confident you are with fighting mobs, because it is early game, you don't have great resources and things, uh, you can make yourself a little hole and put a trap door over that hole. So if, you know, because obviously other mobs are going to come towards you, creepers and all that sort of stuff. So if the worst comes to the worst, you can go down in your little hole here, put a ladder down there to come back up. Um, you can even dig a little area out there and dig away or do whatever you want to do. But it's a bit of an escape plan. It might be worth doing if you're not that confident uh, fighting mobs early game like this. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, go and grab another sword before it turns night time. Because I just realized the durability on this one is low. Incidentally, you will also see I've got a bit of food on me there. 12 apples and 7 bread. Uh, of course, having food on you is very useful. And I've got a little bit of armor that I got from the village. It's not much, but every little helps. So if you do find any armor early game where you get yourself some leather or something like that, then I highly recommend making that up. So what we're going to do now is let it turn to night time and see if we can get ourselves some enderman trap. Incidentally, uh, the ender pearls that we're going to be getting um, aren't just good for the mining dimension portal. There's some other cool things that I'm going to come on to later on in this video. Um, so really, ender pearls, if you can get them early game, are worth the risk, in my opinion, and worth the time spent to spend an evening out here like this trying to get them. So let's see how we go. Okay, I did see an enderman around here. So is that him there? Uh, yeah, I think it... Oh, my goodness. I was quite far away. I actually wasn't sure if that was him and looked right and was a bit silly, but okay, here we go. So the enderman will come up like this. Come on, dude, come a little bit closer. There we go. And of course, you can't get under here because this is only too high and we can just stay under here like this. Now, be careful around you because mobs may be approaching from the back. So uh, you might want to have your mob sounds turned up high just so you can hear them if they do. Um, definitely worth keeping an eye on that because you don't want to die uh, when you're doing this if you can avoid it. And we got an ender pearl straight away, which is all we need, really, is one. I'm actually going to stay out here a bit longer, see if I can get any more. But uh, for the mining dimension, that's all we need. So I'm going to go on to explaining the mining dimension now, as well as some mining tips and tricks. And uh, we'll carry on with that video once I've seen this night out, see if I can get any more ender pearls. Okay, guys, so it was just the one ender pearl in the end, but that is all that we need for now, along with some bricks and, of course, our stone pickaxe. So first thing you want to do, obviously, is make up our seven bricks, which we place around like this. Uh, then we need the ender pearl in the center there with the stone pickaxe on top and we get ourselves a mining dimension portal so i put that just down in here and then we right click that there we go it takes us immediately to the mining dimension uh, now you want to remember where this is so again if we press b here uh, you want to just call it you know portal or something like that because you're going to have to find your way back to this to get back to the overworld so there we go that's in place uh, now cool things about this world first of all if i hover over the sun there you'll see the sun does not move. It is always day. Uh, so that, of course, also means that no mobs will spawn up here on the ground. Uh, when I say no mobs, I mean no hostile mobs, of course. Uh, we've still got little chickens, little black chickens <laughs> things here. Uh, but that's pretty cool. So you can you can do your mining in, uh, in safety. Um, and also, I'm not sure, though, if they will spawn underneath, but they just don't spawn uh, up on top here because obviously it is always day. So I am now going to get to doing a little bit of mining up in here and then come back and show you a couple of other cool things. So hey guys, I'm just doing a bit of uh, mining here and those of you who are very perceptive will see that in the top right I now have a mini map. Uh, so if you press Y you can go to your mini map settings to toggle that on or off and uh, do some other things with it. Uh, I'll leave all this up to you how you want to do that whether you want it on or not. Just to say though you can also use Z to enlarge it if you hold down Z there. Um, so that's kind of cool if you if you need to do that. The reason I've got it on is because I like to get down to Y level 11 and it just shows me there what level I'm at. That currently obviously 27. Uh, but I came across this fiery glass ore which I wanted to talk to you guys about because it is quite a useful thing to have. Uh, so basically what we can do here if we get some sticks is we can use this to make up torches. So we get fiery glass. It says that they're a little bit brighter than a regular torch and apparently they're waterproof too, which I'm really looking forward to trying that out. Um, but we can use those as we're mining instead of using up coal, uh, basically because obviously coal is quite a useful resource and probably more useful than this. If you hover over this and hit U, um, you see other than making the torches or blocks of fiery glass, which you know could potentially look good, um, it's not super useful. Just seeing this though as fuel, it will smelt 12 items, whereas coal is just 12. Uh, sorry, just eight. But of course, if you want to make a coal furnace, uh, then you're going to need the coal. Um, so yeah, just an alternative here. Thought I'd mention that when you guys are mining, this is something you can use to make your torches. Uh, now at the moment, I've got to uh, the iron pickaxe level. Uh, but what we want to get to, I'll show you guys here, is this thing. This mining gadget. Um, so to do that, we need a bit of iron and redstone. Three diamonds here, but another two there's five diamonds. 
a bit more redstone and lapis, uh, and also some glass panes. So it's not actually too difficult to make. And I'm going to come on to that in a second once I've got the resources, how you make that and how you charge it up and all that sort of stuff. But it's a very cool mining tool that will really speed up your mining. So what you want to do is mine until you've got to a point where you can make up that laser and then come back and mine again because at that point you'll mine a lot quicker. So I'm going to go and get myself to that point now and then show you guys how to make it and how it all works. So let me go and gather some resources and I'll be right back. Well guys, I really think my luck is in today. <laughs> is there a sweeter sight? than diamonds and emeralds right next to each other? I think not. Let's see how many we get. So we got here one, two, three, four. Four diamonds and one emerald, I'm guessing. Okay, that is not too bad at all. There's our first diamonds, that's brilliant. Uh, now, I think I still need one more. I just wanna double check this to the mining gadget. Three there and two there. So I still need one more, which is a little bit upsetting. But still, that's really good. Uh, three emeralds, because I had some from before as well. So this mining trip is going very successfully. If I find that one extra diamond, my goodness, that'll be perfect. I won't have to come back to get on with the other thing. Uh, incidentally, I wanted to talk very quickly about this, Tessalite. Uh, if we go there to uses, guys, Bluestone is in this mod pack. And I've got to say, with the Bluestone, Blue Power, how you want to call it, I am so excited to get into using this stuff. I'm I'm thinking of all the different things we can make with this. I'm sure there's gonna be loads. That's just a little aside from this episode. But if you guys want to see more of that sort of stuff, you know, explored more bluestone, redstone contraptions working together, that kind of thing, uh, leave a little comment and let me know. I'd like to see uh, you know, gauge your guys' interest on that. Uh, so I'm gonna carry on here and get my extra diamond, and then we'll go on to making the mining tool. And uh, as I say, I'll show you how to use that one. Okay, guys. So one thing I didn't realize is mobs can actually spawn in the mining dimension when you have a sort of right click there to get ourselves out of there, um, when you have a thunderstorm. Uh, so I didn't realize that was a thing. I thought they just couldn't spawn in there. So just to give you a heads up that I was wrong about that one, let's have a little sleep here. Uh, but yeah, so you just right click that portal to get back through uh, to the same uh, portal that you placed here in the overworld. Uh, so here's my mining trip results. I did find another vi uh, vein of eight diamonds, so that was awesome. Um, and yeah, we're pretty much now ready to get building. Uh, one thing I wouldn't mind doing is, let's just take out, say, all the redstone for a second and get ourselves enough to make another double chest up because our inventory is getting a bit clogged. Uh, but then we're going to get on to looking at this mining gadget. So I'll place that one down in there. Very good. And you know what? I'm going to tidy my inventory up and then uh, get some sand to make some glass out of and then come out when I've got all the ingredients and go through the mining gadget with you then. Alrighty, guys. So I now have all the stuff we need to uh, make up the items that we're looking at here. So we're going to start off with the uh, mining gadget here. Uh, so we need one of these blank upgrade modules. We can grab one of those. Then we can make our gadget, which is great, but it's pretty useless until it's charged. And that's where we need to get ourselves a charging station. And these aren't actually too difficult to make. You see the recipe right here. Not too bad at all. There is our charging station. Now if I grab a little bit of coal here, we'll go and just chuck this inside for now, out the way here somewhere. Uh, that'll do. Uh, we can put in um, our, I think that goes in there, our mining gadget, put the coal in there, and you'll see it burns very quickly. Uh, and the power here, you can see that it's charging up our mining gadget like that, which is pretty awesome. Uh, now I'm gonna let that obviously get to full charge at some point. Is that gonna use coal? Oh, it's just gonna store power. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so what I want to do is show you guys a few things that you can do with your mining gadgets. Let's just come down here out of the way a little bit. If I look at a block here, uh, and I right click, wow, look how quick this is. So you have to be kind of close to it, but you can see there the speed at which it does that. At. So that's awesome. So this is why you want to rush getting this, because now when I go mining, uh, or even just cutting down trees or moving dirt or whatever, uh, this is going to be so quick. And you see the charge it takes up isn't that much, right? Like down there. It's not dropping its charge too much here when it goes through blocks. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Um, but we can actually uh, do some other things with it that are pretty cool. So if we shift and right click, you'll see it opens up this little GUI here. So you can change the range on it. Um, I, I think having it at maximum would always be preferable, but you can do that if you want to. Um, you can also edit visuals. Okay, so instead of shrink blocks, for example, you can have fade blocks. So now this will fade these blocks like this. Okay, whereas before, uh, shift right click, uh, if I can find my shift key, uh, it was on shrink blocks. So the difference being, um, it looks like this, the blocks sort of shrink down. You guys kind of seeing that, I hope. <laughs> um, so you can do that, which is cool. Uh, the other thing that you can do with it uh, on the visuals mode is change things. So for example, let's say we want um, a red outer and we want to go for like a blue inner. So let's do that. Um, now, look at this, if I point my laser, 
See that? You got a little red outer and a blue inner. So you can kind of play around with that and get it however you want it to look really. Um, so maybe like a mixture of blue and green, for example, would look like this. That's just a light blue. Um, so yeah, again, you're going to need to play around with this stuff and, and do it however you want to do it. Um, but it's, it's pretty cool. If we turn all these to like medium, uh, that'll give us this sort of color. <laughs> so yeah, you can play around with that as much or as little as you want. Um, but just a cool kind of little thing that you can do there uh, with your mining gadget, which I'm now going to go and get charged up. Uh, because obviously I want to get that charged to full and then do some more mining, but that is going to be a much quicker way of doing it. Uh, now, okay, we can't shift click it for some reason, you have to place it in there. Uh, so this, uh, let's go back to the mining gadget tool. Uh, so it's actually from a mod called mining gadget. So if we add mining here, you can see there are a few other things you can get. So one is a modification table. Now we don't need this just yet, but we will when we want to make the modifications to it because you can do other cool things with it. So for example, a three by three upgrade means that it will mine a three by three area. So you can mine very quickly at like that. Uh, this here will um, have uh, torches automatically placed as you mine through, I believe. Um, and you can see here all different things that you can do with this like fortune um, and all that sort of stuff. So it's a really useful gadget to have and we will get into doing this as we progress through the series to, uh, to modify it and improve it. Uh, if we look at, for example, a 3x3 upgrade, it's not too cheap. So that's why we're not going to worry about that just yet. We need uh, 12 diamonds, 2 ender pearls, and this other stuff isn't too bad, but there's another 2 diamonds in that. So not that cheap for, for day one, which is what this is, just your starting out tips and tricks. But uh, certainly something that you'll come on to using and that will be very useful as you progress through. So this is just a little bonus tip now, not something I was actually going to do today. But uh, once I saw about these fiery torches, I wanted to try out. And that was the placing of them underwater. Let's see if these work. Oh, look at that. They do. They really do work underwater like that. Okay, that's awesome. So, I mean, there's tons of cool things you can do, like with a base there. Um, but what I wanted to check out as well is, let's say we place a torch here. And we have water flowing at it. Look at that. It doesn't break. It actually stops the water from, from spawning. And if we place it on the source block, no, it doesn't get rid of it. It just lets it flow like that. Okay, that is very cool. So, yeah, just a little bonus tip there, as I say, not something I was specifically going to do today. Uh, but I wanted to try that out. And I figured you guys may have some questions about that after seeing that it works underwater on the, uh, you know, when you hover over it here. Uh, so, yeah, okay, very cool. <laughs> so, I just thought I'd pass that message on. Okay, guys. So, uh, next up, I want to talk briefly about exploration. Because, obviously, when you do start a new mod pack, uh, you are going to be doing a lot of exploring to find different things. Uh, so a couple of ways here that we can kind of speed this up and make this a little bit easier and better for you guys. First of all is a sleeping bag, which just requires three wool like this. You get your colored sleeping bag just like that. Place that down on the floor as you go. Uh, just a useful little item to take with you when you are traveling. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is this thing, the wooden jetpack, which if we get the recipe up for it here, uh, you see it's a lot of wood. And there's a bit of uh, redstone and iron involved, but once you've been doing your mining for a while, and particularly if you've made that mining tool and done that for a while, uh, you'll be golden, you'll get loads of that stuff very quickly. Uh, and this will then allow you to travel obviously uh, a lot better and have all kinds of uses. Um, so that, that's now fully charged, I want to put this in here, charge that up, that's very quick as you can see. Uh, so what we want to do now is, let's come outside here and uh, try this thing out just so I can show you guys how this will work. So you can see it just fits there, you take your, your chest plate off, it'll fit there. And uh, let me see what the controls are for this. Okay, so what you need to do is turn your engine on, which you can do using V, you can see there. And then when I press uh, spacebar, here we go, I'm off and I'm flying and I'm away. And this, even though it's just a wooden jetpack, is a heck of a lot quicker than just walking around. So this is going to be very useful, that's awesome. Uh, the other thing you can do is turn on hover mode, which is set to G by default, but that is conflicted with another key, so I changed mine to P. So when hover's on, just want to see... Okay, so this will stop you from falling, basically. So you see here, I'm now not pressing anything right now. It's just going to let me hover down like that, and then you won't take any fall damage. So you can turn that on and off as well. Now you see here, it does go through power pretty quickly, so you're going to need to recharge it. One thing you can do, though, which wouldn't be too difficult, would be simply to take your charging station with you and some coal. Um, it's certainly a useful item, though, and if I actually search Jetpack here, uh, you can see they go from wood up to copper and all the way through like this. But for example, if we want to go from wood to copper, we use the wooden jetpack with copper um, you know, amendments, if you like, and then we go through stone and so on and so forth. So each one will be used in the next one uh, you know, to upgrade. I think that makes sense. It kind of makes sense to me. I hope you guys got what I'm saying. Um, so probably, yeah, certainly something I would say is useful to have. Uh, now, the final thing I want to talk to you about is uh, definitely something that not everyone's going to be able to do. I got lucky... The wandering villager was here and I managed to get a lead from that villager. Now the reason this is so useful, if I search again, 
is because of one of these things, an ender farmer's lead, which you can see requires a lead um, as well as uh, an ender pole and a gold ingot. So I went and got myself another ender pole at night time there. Uh, now, obviously, the difficult thing about this can be getting the lead, right? Because you might need the slime ball. Um, however, you can also do it in this mod pack with rope, which you can get from hemp. So you might be able to do this in a few different ways. Uh, and if you can, it certainly has its uses, which uh, I'll go into now. What I need to do is find myself a passive mob. Now, I want to say uh, this does not work, unfortunately, on villagers. Uh, now, that's important to uh, sort of remember because the way that you pick up a passive mob with this is by left clicking, which I'll show you right here uh, with this cow. So we left click the cow, and there we go. So the cow is now inside. So if I want to bring him back to my base, if I made a little pen for him, and then right click to place. Now, a few things to note here. First of all, you'll see that it has a bit of a charge on it. It doesn't seem to be too much. You can certainly get a good few starting animals back to your base with this. Uh, the other thing to note, uh, it does tell you what's inside it when you left click it, and then right click to put down. Uh, so of course, if you left click a villager with this or an iron golem, you're actually just gonna hit them. So you don't wanna do that. So uh, just to make a note there that this will not work on those mobs. Alrighty, well that's about it guys for our first episode here on All The Mods 4. If you like this episode, if you found it useful, if you want to see more All The Mods 4 episodes and other Minecraft and modded Minecraft content, then please be sure to like and subscribe. And of course, hit that bell guys. <laughs> I know that's a really cringe, but I just had to do it. Anyway guys, I hope you like this episode. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.